When you open your construction business, you start realizing that you need new clients. Uh, the ones that you had when you started as a side job or something like that are not enough to cover everything you need to pay now. So how to get clients? Well, there's many options on how to get to clients. First, you can start becoming more known using social media, for example, using uh, events, using uh, people you already know, people within the area where you're at that might recommend you to others. That's the most typical one. Then you go to number two, door to door. That's, this one is a little bit harder uh, because you're gonna get your door slammed a lot in your face and people saying, get the fuck out of my property. But believe it or not, it actually works very well. And the third one is through a sales team. You will be sharing your profits or you might be paying a salary for these jobs to come in. These are the three that I have used or are using at this moment. A lot of how my business started had to do with word of mouth. For many, many years, everything I did was because somebody else recommended me to somebody else. And believe it or not, this got us into millions of dollars of work, but that stops working. This is no different than a game. When one strategy doesn't work, you move to the next one. It's gonna be a tried and error kind of area for you to get these clients and getting them to trust you. The hardest part of getting new clients is that they don't know you, neither do you know them. The trust has to be built. And a lot of times when it's bigger clients, they're gonna give you shitty jobs, things you don't wanna do. Uh, things as, you know, can you replace a ceiling tile? Can you patch a two by two piece of drywall? Can you change one piece of tile? The only reason why they give you these small jobs is because they wanna know that you can actually show up on time, do it for the price you set, finish it with the quality they're expecting. All clients are expecting to get everything they deserve for whatever amount of money they're willing to pay you. You wanna have clients that never look at the invoice, you wanna have clients that look at every goddamn invoice and they wanna know how many nails you're gonna use in the project. And you have clients that they have a budget and you gotta hit within that budget. You gotta be flexible. You can be one of those that just gets there and if it's not my number, fuck you. I understand, you know what you're worth. In some cases, you gotta stick with what your numbers are. In some other cases, you gotta be flexible because the places you are knocking the doors to be at are not that flexible. Know what you're worth, but at the same time, know who you're working for. This is gonna help you with the next step, which is maintaining your clients. To maintain a client, you don't need to kiss their ass or bend over backwards, but you do have to be there for them. Your client expects of you what they cannot do themselves. It's nothing different than going to a restaurant. I don't go to a restaurant to do my own dishes or to serve my own food or to cook my own food except the Korean barbecue, but you don't go to the restaurant for that. You go to eliminate all of that off of your house, of your house, get an actual service and you tip that person on the service they give you. That's exactly what we are. We are service companies. As much as you want to call yourself a contractor construction, we still provide a service and you're never the boss. Your client is the boss. We are in business for our clients not for ourselves. You hear this a lot between business owners and non-business owners. Non-business owners will say, well, the boss is the one making the big box. Business owner says, yeah, but I got more bosses that I know what to do with them. It's because we're trying to create these relationships and maintaining the relationships with our clients because at the end of the day, their needs is what matters to us. Not only do we have to meet the needs, we have to make sure we're doing it up to their standards. Now, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be clients and you hit the standards, but they're always gonna complain about a price. A lot of clients are not gonna understand that for most companies, we're trying to hit three things, even though they're almost impossible to hit, but we are trying for it. One of them is finishing on time or doing things in a really quick time or good timing. We're trying to do them at the best price we can do them for, and we're trying to give you the best quality we can. If you cannot afford those three things, then you shouldn't be asking for them as a client. But as a contractor, you always have to try to hit those three targets because it's what keeps you in relationships with these people, whoever they are. They could be the owners of apartment complex, the owner of a home, the owner of a shop. They require of your service because they cannot do it themselves or they don't have the time to do it themselves. So you gotta do it if you were them. This will make them comfortable with you. They're gonna make them trust you. And then you're not gonna have to go through this giggle with the numbers every freaking time you give them one. Now, don't get me wrong, in some cases you do. Some guys just think they can get a better deal than the better deal they're getting already. And that's when you need to realize when the relationships are worth keeping or they're worth getting rid of. When your client becomes more of a headache than it becomes an asset to your business, or their business is more of a priority than your business is, then sometimes you gotta say, no, I can't work under those parameters 
where you are the only one taking advantage of the situation and it's not a give and take that is happening throughout it. Myself, I wouldn't mind losing money on part of the project because a client is keeping me busy throughout other areas. The problem is that they take the other areas and they're expecting me to keep giving them money away. That's the time to say goodbye. It doesn't mean that the relationship has died. You don't wanna burn any bridges because you don't know where they might need you in the future or you might need them. Don't burn the bridge, but you have to be polite saying, listen, this ain't working for my business. It might be working for yours, but it's not working for mine. Either we can come out to a new understanding or a new agreement and then move towards that direction, or we just gotta let go. Don't be afraid of letting go if this is causing you more than it's actually making you. They need to understand that either they are in business or we are in business. We're both in business for one reason. It's to make money. Nobody likes to go to work for free. Then it goes down into the relationships that you have with the vendors that you use to supply these jobs. Either it's your paint, your cabinets, your countertops, your appliances, flooring, baseboard, doors, windows, blinds, roofing materials. You gotta understand that these are companies that are also need to make money, but you need to understand as well that they're not the only ones and they know that. So make sure that when you're building those relationships with your vendors, you gotta give them somewhere they're gonna win and it's somewhere you're gonna win. We can't win them all. I understand you can shop through Amazon and do all of these other shopping things. Leave that up to them. Let the client shop through those accounts. Why? Because the product that it gets installed into a project is gonna be viewed by many. And the last thing you want people to say is that cheap ass thing from Amazon that the contractor bought. I'm okay saying, sorry, sir. It wasn't me who bought it, it was yourself. That's why I leave the cheap ass things to be purchased by my owners or by my clients. I concentrate on the bigger items. And for me to be able to make these deals and do them for a certain amount of money, for a certain amount of look, how is it gonna look when it's completed and all of these other things. I gotta be consistent, not only on my work ethic and it's showing up and doing it on time and doing it professionally and making it look right. I gotta be consistent with the material that I use so it's easier for my team to use it. Use your vendors as you use your clients. Take care of them so they can take care of you. They're not gonna be giving you the deals that you deserve or that you believe you deserve when you're only buying a thousand dollars a year from them. To them, that's nothing but an account, a number, they barely see you, they barely know who you are. The more they know you, the more you know them. I personally have relationships with paint stores, commercial stores, Home Depot, with cabinet stores, with granite stores. And for a lot of companies, it's a waste of time for the owner to be doing all of these things. It's not. So now that you have all these things in place, you have to build a relationship with your client. To build these relationships, it starts from the moment you meet them all the way to the last time you work for them. Believe it or not, these relationships could be long. They become kind of like a marriage. So you gotta build them. And they build by trust, consistency, and a little bit of ass kissing. Let's be realistic, everybody likes to be the boss. So don't be afraid of staying in contact with your clients. This is a motion of every week. Hey, is there anything we can do for you? Hey, now that you're bringing me all this work, uh, can I do something for your property? Is there anything I can do for children within the property? Is there anything I can do for you? Can I bring you a coffee, right? It, it's, it's a relationship kind of like I said, within a marriage. You, you gotta give and take. You, you gotta be willing to sometimes just be on the phone with them for 30 minutes because they just wanna vent. You have to be there for them because they will always be there for you as long as you maintain your consistency on your price, the type of work that you give them, and the matter of time that you give it to them. You need to understand that your client relationship is the most important to grow that business. Don't forget about them just because they haven't given you work in 30 days. That doesn't mean you don't exist in their book. It's your job to stay in touch with them. Treat people the way you wanna be treated in business and out of business. I know it's a myth that is out there that every contractor is an asshole. You might not be wrong, but you gotta remember that that guy was not an asshole when he started. We were made into. Don't make your client into one just because you think you were treated wrong. The client is always right. That doesn't change either you're in construction, on restaurant, on retail, or on any other form of business. The client is always right, but that doesn't mean you gotta put up with it. That they are right, it doesn't mean that you have to bend over backwards. It has to be a give and take. You just don't automatically become a slave to your client. This is over time. You're gonna understand which clients are worth doing that for and which ones are not. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave it on the comments and don't forget to subscribe. I hope to see you guys on the field.